Hi, I'm Joe, and in the last program, you saw me do this painting to the halfway point. Now we're going to put in the detail. We're going to put in a layer of darker paint. And so it goes darker. I'm going to use French ultramarine this time, or ultramarine blue. And I'm mixing that in with the same colours I've used already. And it's just going to give me a darker mix. I'm going to keep it biased toward blue. So here we go. I'm going to start just over to the right and get some of this dark detail next to the main column. So here we go. I've got a flat brush here and I can just get that in quite nicely and just define the edge of the column. There we go. That gives us that edge. And then uh, we're going to do the other side using the same method, flat brush. Just got to turn my position slightly so I can get at it. There we are. We've got nice strong colour. I'm just going to make it a little bit darker. So I'll run that into the same wash I've just put on. All the way up. And just define the edge of the column like that. I'm going to take it out to the edge of the building. So got a little bit of uh, moulding sticking out of the edge. Down we go. A little bit more detail there. I'll just come back in and start to define the edge of this column a little bit better now. I can see where it is. There we go. So we're basically painting a column by leaving it out. So what was a dark wash is now showing up as a lighter wash because there's an even darker one over it. Just going to put a little bit of detail on like this using the edge of the brush, using the chisel end of this flat brush. And I'm just going to use it to put on a little bit of detail underneath the top of this column and just get a few accents of dark onto this dark detail on top and now what we can do is use the color we've got to darken anything that needs darkening so we've got the lion here that definitely needs making stronger we're going to start to build up all the dark detail across the background i need to have an indication that there are crowds of people in the distance, but in front of this dark backdrop. Now we work our way across. So the roofscape is going in here, a little bit more dark, very quick, very straightforward. Now we come to the edge of the large domed building. First thing I want to do is I want to make this dome a little bit darker than the rest of the building, simply by painting it in a darker colour. And there we, there we go. And we've now got the, the higher dome. The same applies there. It's going to be a little darker and some dark detail within the surrounding structure. So, and some of these minarets and pillars as well. Then we've got the lower part of the dome, sort of a cornice running around there. And now some of the detail, and we just put windows and arches in with single strokes. Look, that's a bit of an L-shaped one, but not too much, just a, enough to indicate. Now I've just got to find my way around the scene a little bit, so I just need to put a few reference marks in. So here we go. It's not an architectural drawing. It's just an impression of what we actually see. Those windows have all but disappeared, so I'm putting them in a little bit more strongly but I don't want them too strong. Now we've got a roof running across. There's barely any colour in it, but I'm just adding a tiny little bit of warmth from some burnt sienna and quinacridone magenta, which is already on the palette. So we've got roof running along, and there's a second one there. There we go. Back to the domes, we'll put this one in, just add dark like that, and the top one, and a little bit of detail around there, and gradually build it up. Now we've got windows, well they can be just done with single brush marks, so there we go, just marks, 
and they're not all the same all the way along. They're quite regularly spaced, but I'm not going to count windows or do anything like that. We're just going to hint at them. And again, there's a row of little marks there. Those are the top ones. Longer marks for lower down windows. They seem to run all the way across, trying to see what's there. But again, I don't, I don't want to do a fussy, fiddly, accurate blow-by-blow -blow account. Just give the rough impression. I'm just mixing my colour more strongly, and that's so that it overpowers the layer underneath and it doesn't just get absorbed into it. So here we go, some of that colour's disappearing down into the pigment underneath. Just go over it again, like that, no trouble at all. A little bit more detail going in, and uh, now we've got the same process again exactly. More windows going in, and then we've got some deeper window apertures or arches. Again, a little bit more detail here as we work our way along. Now we're just getting the last of those darks in place. And then anything else that needs strengthening up, I can go back and do that. I can just come back to this column now and complete this. We've got a little bit of detail to go in at the base. It goes down to a raised plinth. Just another little trick we can do to give the column a little bit more body. I'm using a larger brush and we're just going to drag some colour up like that. Let's get rid of some of this colour. Just a little bit too much. That just gives it a little bit more texture. I'll get a piece of tissue paper and dry the brush. I might come back and put a little bit more detail in later, but I want to leave this stage now so I can see what it looks like once it's dry. Now we're going to do the people in the foreground. Uh, and many, of, many artists can be a little bit nervous about painting people, but it needn't be worrying if you allow the brush to do the work for you. And I'll show you how. One often worries about flesh colour. What's flesh colour? Well, it's very dark, so their faces are in deep shadow. And all I'm going to do is get a little bit of burnt sienna and some black. The black is from ultramarine, and we're just going to put the faces in first. Now, the key here is that colour is slightly warmer than the surrounding area. And those little oval shapes, they're just showing me where their heads are, where the fronts of their heads are and their faces. And once that's dry, I'll paint the bodies and I'll just leave the faces. Now one problem is solved with them, they're completely in silhouette, so I haven't got to worry about any detail. So what I'm going to do is mix some colour and I'll need to get those faces dry before I put any colour on. So what I'll do is dry it with the hairdryer. Here we go. Now we'll put the figures in. We're going to get Payne's Grey, start a mix on another palette. And I want to make absolutely sure that these figures are really dark and silhouetted. Then I'll take some of the colour I've already used and mix the Payne's Grey up with it. So I know that that's going to be nice and strong. Now the next thing I want to do is make absolutely sure I've got a really well pointing brush. There we go. I've got that. And now we're going to start painting the figures. I'm going to drag the brush and I'm going to try and paint their limbs with single brush strokes. So that's a limb, single brush stroke, no more than that. And she's got what looks like an, an anorak or a coat with a hood. So there's the hood and we're just going to try and paint the top of her hair. And there we go. And just join that up with the body. And I try to keep figures slim. Now her coat is kicking out a little bit like that, forwards. Now her legs, which are just one shape in silhouette. And she's got these big fashionable boots on. Feet can be awkward, so I'm just not painting them. I'll look at it at the end, but that will probably read just fine. We'll see. Now the same again. We've got a uh, lady here, probably her mum. And she's pushing a push chair, so we paint mum, we paint the push chair all together. There's a hair going around her face, and 
the hair going over the other side. And this is interesting. She's got a buggy. She's pushing a buggy. And I'm going to draw the lines of the buggy. But once I've got those in, I'm going to block it in in quite a jumbled up sort of shape and just leave a few spaces within it. So this is important. Those are the wheels. That's what tells us it's a buggy. And now we've got the child's head. I'm actually going to paint round that for the child's head and leave a little bit of space. So we're filling in some space, but not too much, because it's uh, quite a mechanical contrivance with lots of different facets and gaps in between. And that's as far as I want to go with the buggy. So we'll leave it at that. We'll do the next figure now. And I'm using this little trick where I can't get the brush to point quite as well as I'd like it to. I'm flattening the brush off like that and then turning it sideways. And I need that because I need a very slim line for where her hairs coming over the side of her face. Now I've got the hair coming across the top and down that side. Her arm, just single brush strokes for this. Single brush stroke down, single brush stroke down. And finally, the child. This is a useful little group of figures because they're doing something. They're walking along, one's holding a buggy, a child's holding onto the same buggy, the other child's holding onto the mother. The idea is don't paint people, paint what they're doing.